vitality and being able to access our full potential energy and enthusiasm. Healing and success really are one and when we undergo the regeneration process and we access really deep healing we can't help but become magnets to great success and abundance at the same time. Nitric oxide is the invigorating life force, which is also linked to the Kundalini. They've done many studies of how nitric oxide raises in the body during Kundalini experiences. Because nitric oxide, like oxytocin, is, is a catalyst for all these like remarkable alchemical upgrades, our potential is, is very unrealized. Luckily, so many more people are becoming interested in this and tapping into their potential. Kelly Marie Kerr is amazing at creating a connection point between Vedic science and yogic philosophy biblical symbology and modern science and the awareness of the body. Now, she's written a book recently called The Cell of Life, and this is about the great regeneration that our body goes through every single lunar cycle. As the moon shifts through the sky or we move underneath the moon or however it's going on, the celestial bodies and the coordination as within, so without. So the moon is coming back every 29 and a half days to where it was in the in the cosmic weavings of it all. And internally, there is a full-on alchemical process, which she dives completely into in this conversation, explaining how we open up through the crown chakra and all the way down through from our fontanelle into the lower part of our spine and back through the organs in our body and all the way back up, what that process looks like, the threefold process of enlightenment, what's happening in mind, what's happening in body, what's happening in soul. Now, we start at the fundamental building blocks in the chemistry of life. We look at oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, hydrogen, and how electrons are basically the building blocks of life. And electrons are also electromagnetism, which is fundamentally light. This is a really interesting conversation. It's where mysticism meets science and how you can have an incredible amount of vitality by harnessing the power of the cycles that we're naturally embedded in, the cycles of nature, living in alignment with the greater solar cycles, the greater lunar cycles, what's going on in your pineal and pituitary gland at different points throughout the cycle and what's actually happening within your body and how ultimately to connect and harness to these cycles so you can fundamentally live a a life that is brimming with natural vitality. Yo! <laughs> Welcome back to the Inspired <laughs> Evolution. And we have with us once again, Kelly Marie Kerr. Kelly Marie, how are you going? I'm really well. Thank you for having me back. I'm very excited to talk to you again. Oh my goodness, it is such a pleasure for us to have you here on the back of your new book on its way out. For those that haven't tuned into Kelly Marie Kerr before, please, there is another episode which is really unique. Um, I can't say too much more about it. Please go check it out. We'll put a link to it in the show notes below amongst all the Kelly Marie's offerings as well. If you're tuning into her for the first time though, she is an author, she's a yoga practitioner and a YouTube creator. Um, but those are all very high level sort of titles. Um, her work and her books and her videos on YouTube explore the sort of inner alchemy of like enlightenment and kind of how science meets scripture, but then she uses biblical symbols and metaphors and mystical like Vedic and yogic insights and how all of this mysticism and like ancient wisdom sort of gets corroborated by modern science. Um, her work, I guess, is dedicated to, can I say this, Kelly Marie, like dedicated to human potential and really us realizing the hidden secrets that are lying deep within us and how to actualize that and connect to our truest source and being and just for that fullest radiant expression. That's what I get anyway. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> so this is, uh, if you're into any of that, this is going to be the place for you. Kelly, so thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. That was an amazing introduction. Thank you. <laughs> so you recently wrote a book called The Cell of Life. Tell us a little bit about where, what you mean by The Cell of Life and what the title what does that really mean for you when you're talking about the cell of life? Because there's that connotation of energy because we're talking about cells, but we're also talking about like the building blocks of what makes us up and then life in general. So what wrote, yeah, can you just a little bit about the cell of life? Um, well, it is about the great G- regeneration, um, which is also known um, esoterically as the threefold enlightenment. And um, I have written previous books um, like The God Design and Elevation, which also talk about the inner alchemy process um, of enlightenment and rejuvenation and regeneration. And for this one specifically, I wanted to really follow um, the journey and understanding of the mitosis cycle that happens each month. So that's where the title came from, because it really goes into a lot of depth into like our cellular intelligence and how, you know, we're just made of billions of intuitive intelligence cells and how magical that is. It's really incredible because the book is actually written in, um, it covers uh, science quite in-depthly, but it's written quite succinctly, so it's very digestible. Um, one of the key questions I have in there is you mentioned threefold enlightenment. For someone that's tuning into that as an idea for the first time, can you describe the three sort of folds of enlightenment that you're alluding to there? Yeah, it's called threefold because the mystics of old understood it to affect us on three key levels. So Mm. physically, um, mentally, and also emotionally. I mean, you could also break down those three levels as being in line um, with the three somatic divisions of the body as well. Um, It just means that we really feel the benefits of the great regeneration, not only, um, you know, in a kind of cognitive mental way where we feel sharper and more energetic, but you also feel it, um, you know, it also has the ability to align with the spirit in a way that your cells are actually going to regenerate themselves on a very physical level. So, you know, the threefold is is really quite key because the potential of it as a cycle is just incredible. One of the interesting pieces as you start reading into the literature that you've put together is that there's that influence between all of the three different dimensions. They're not isolated. Um, There's like a really deeply woven intrinsic relationship between all three and I think in common vernacular mind and body are well understood as being more and more like it's it's we understand that they're very connected it's like oh I've got hunched shoulders and all that leads to depression if I can maybe articulate my posture and open up a little bit I'm going to walk with a little bit more confidence I'm going to have a little bit more charisma Um, but the third element especially which is you know spirit and it's really interesting um, the regeneration that you've described that is available between these three things weaving together and really what's going on in the body. And I love the track that you take. And before we get into that, maybe it's worth discussing what mitosis is um, briefly before we go into like what's going on in the body (laughs) based on the mind and the spiritual aspect of things. Yeah, please. Um, Mitosis is the cells um, cleaning themselves and dividing and replicating themselves. And the um, most incredible thing about stem cells is they have the ability to become whatever the body most needs them to be. So their potential to to become a neurite cell for the brain or to become a kidney cell or, you know, a skin cell for, you know, that part of the body. It's all based on what the nervous system is prioritizing at that time. So 
our mitosis process, our cell regenerating process that's continuously happening from the inside out really is a key to our health and longevity um, and, you know, our feeling vibrant, feeling enthusiastic and energetic because, you know, when we we feel faithful and energetic, it has a knock on effect into the body as well. So it's not just, you know, not having the aches and pains, it's really getting up and having zest for life as well as that. I, I find that really intriguing. We recently had Lisa Miller on the podcast. I'm not sure if you're across her work, but she, um, she studied the mind for quite some time it's been multiple decades and she's a leading researcher at columbia university has her own sort of program in there she talks about how different parts of the brain are actually like reinforced by faith and they actually inoculate us against things like depression and i think in this conversation what i'm hearing from you is actually that faith-based awareness actually energizes us um, and gives us more vitality as well in your book you say um, fear sadness pain anxiety aggression anger are all emotions that counteract the great regeneration um, and actually the oxytocin is a powerful antidote. Um, yeah, when we're talking about stem cells, what like how do they connect to? Because oxytocin is a feel good hormone, right? Mm. Oxytocin is really one of the catalysts for the climax of um, the felt experience of enlightenment. When people describe the mystic moments they've had, or the Kundalini rising through their spine where they felt tingles or what feels like hot oil being poured on them it's usually uh the biochemical reason for that is that when we have heart expansions from feeling more loved up and feeling more open and compassionate we actually secrete floods of oxytocin which is a catalyst for pineal metabolism and pineal metabolism is what happens when the pituitary and the pineal come into sync so when you get that harmony between the two houses or when you get the the alchemical wedding of the masculine and the feminine coming together inside your temporal body and those two master glands are in total harmony uh the oxytocin just you know really like begins to secrete and overload and that also um, causes CSF, which is known as Christ oil esoterically, to foam and multiply. And then we get this seeping over through the ventricles. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps just yeah. talking about <laughs> it because I've experienced this for myself and it's just like being wrapped in like a magical cuddling blanket mm. of love it's just so wonderful and um yeah so the oxytocin being a catalyst for the pineal metabolism and then the pineal when it's boosted into action it's able to upgrade melatonin which is a wonderful chemical anyway into bioproducts such as dmt mexamine pinaline and all of the other biochemicals of enlightenment which i did already describe in my book the god design secrets mm -hmm. of the mind body and soul but with the cell of life i just really wanted to hone in on how that process is also connected with all of the cells of the body collectively and how that process causes an entire awakening of all of the bodily systems. It's incredible tracking the path and the journey that, um, yeah, just starting from the fundamental building blocks. Maybe that's a good question for me to ask you is like you refer to some of the basic chemical building blocks that build us up. Um, yeah, we're talking nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, and like then the sort of symphony that gets created into describing some of the, the states that you were just describing as well. So can you tell us a little bit about the building blocks and why understanding those is so important um, 
Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's really important to um, have a perception um, and an understanding of ourselves as you know, this divine stardust material, because mm. when you, you know, you go into our, our makeup, our cells as human beings, you know, beyond the billions of cells, those cells are made of molecules and the molecules are made of atoms and so on and so forth until you get to electrons. And many of the ancient mystics talk about, you know, the, the magic that's that's in the electrons and you know for example with nitrogen nitrogen has seven protons seven electrons and seven neutrons so it's the seven 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 element Mm -hmm. and when we take that as an example into the book of revelation and we remember that john's vision of christ he was seen with seven candles, seven seals, um, and seven stars in his right hand. Well, the electrons always like go from the right and circulate to the left because of the magnetism. So you could say that you know, nitrogen as the fire of life, as the creator of cell salts and the and the cell salts then build up to become the molecules and the cells and so on and so forth. You could say that the nitrogen 777 fire of life is the catalyst for all of that. And that's coming directly from the sun, which is also linked to the sun as in S O N Christ again. So you just have these marvelous parallels um that continue to blow my mind um every time I little get a little drop or a little connection and then I you know I sort of think "Hmm, am I onto something there I'll you know do my due diligence and it's just I find it really exciting to see how beautifully modern science and you know, these ancient historical sacred literatures just marry up so beautifully um, when they're put together in the right way. Mm. I do want to find out more about nitrogen oxide because it seems like it's a it's special. Mm. Yeah, nitric oxide is a big one and it's kind of coincides with what we were saying about oxytocin. Um, so when we get really excited through breath work, um, meditation, going for a run, yoga, we actually cause the body to create more nitric oxide. And the body loves nitric oxide. It's a molecule of health. Nobody disputes this fact. It's not, you know, some taboo, controversial thing to say. It's like nitric oxide is incredible. The more, the better in the body. Mm. Um, So nitric oxide is a combination of nitrogen, which we talked about, 777, and oxygen, 888, because oxygen has the eight protons, the eight neutrons, the eight electrons. So then you have the 777 and the 888. And when you go to studies of gematria, we find that the Greek value of the name Jesus is actually 888. So then it's like, oh, you've got the parallel of 777 with Christ and the Christ fire. And then you've got parallels of 888 being you know linked to the name of Jesus and how you know nitric oxide is just this basically the invigorating life force which is also linked to the kundalini there's many I mean I recommend um Jaina Dixon um is probably the best writer for kundalini chemistry and she talks about how um you know they've done many studies of how nitric oxide raises in the body during kundalini experiences and um 
because nitric oxide like oxytocin is is a catalyst for all these like remarkable um alchemical upgrades within us um yeah it's just it's just we are our potential is is very unrealized by mm-hmm. by many but luckily so many more people are, are becoming interested in this and tapping into you know their potential which is really exciting your book talks about how we can actually generate nitric oxide and naturally in our system i know from my past and just gym and weightlifting supplements that you can actually get nitric oxide as a supplement um and i totally agree that it's not um it's not disputed that it's actually got you know great value for well-being um your thoughts on externally introducing nitric oxide into your system versus internally generating it um you can use nitric oxide supplements like l-arginine and citrulline as like if you're used to like working out quite in quite extreme ways um and you know i know that there are scientific like benefits of that um i have to say which i hate having to say this but you know it's the same across the board that we are not allowed to give anybody medical advice i'm only speaking from my own experience and from having researched you know peer reviewed sciences but my personal um opinion on taking supplements is that if you're actually doing your practice if you're doing your exercise and taking time out to like self nurture then you will build nitric oxide in your body without having to take an external mm. supplement mm. but if you're using it for a specific reason then i don't see that there's anything wrong with that Good. it is a natural compound awesome thank you so much for sharing that now sort of surprised i've made it this far into the episode and we haven't discussed light because i feel like the book like this the yeah there's so much in there in the cell of life about even just what the regeneration is about. It seems to be about this, like you said, this monthly mitosis like that we go through within the body. Um, but actually what we're harnessing is light. Like that sounds, I say, <laughs> it sounds ungrounded in some way. So can you ground it in for us? I guess is what I'm trying, what I would like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. So yeah. the, the most basic and most minuscule or etheric energy that there is that we know of tangibly is light and sometimes that's referred to as photons or photon waves um or you know its real name is electromagnetic energy so somebody might hear the term electromagnetic energy and not necessarily make the connection that you're just talking about light like why don't you just say light um so electromagnetic energy or light is the basis of everything we are light beings beyond those electrons and protons and neutrons that's all coming from photons photons are somehow remarkably uh you know intelligently coming together by divine mind which you know is kind of the overarching intelligence if you like um to create form to the photons gather to create the electrons the electrons make the atoms and so on and so forth molecules cells 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 etc so when we get we receive an influx of light that is bespoke to us once a month when the moon is in our sun sign because the moon is like 
um, a satellite, if you like. So if you think about your, what star sign are you? Virgo. Virgo. So if you think about Virgo as being a colander or a sieve of very, like, all of the nuances and energies that are held by the constellation of Virgo. Virgo. When the moon goes through that, it's, there's a more potent energy of like Virgo and everything that was present at your time of birth being reflected Mm -hmm. to you. So when that that happens, happens, yeah, sorry. That's yes. yeah, that's every every lunar cycle. So mm-hmm. every twenty nine and a half days, because there's actually thirteen new moons in a, a solar year. Like our, you know, modern months are different to the lunar months. So yeah. Every twenty nine and a half days you will have a period where each person will have a period when the moon is traversing or traveling through their st- their star sign and that's when we each receive that divine influx of light that matches with our genetic dna light coding and it's giving us the opportunity to install and to reinvigorate and integrate with that mitosis that's happening all of that energy that we just like need for life and growth and development back in it's incredible it's so good i i have to say because i actually and unbeknownst to the wisdom that you're sharing um i set monthly intentions aligned with the moon earth cycle so i set an intention for the solar cycle every year um and then every month and people that i life coach we do the same thing we set an intention for yeah, generally, if they're not into the moon conversation, um, then it's monthly intentions. Like, what's the intention for this coming month? But I can sort of, yeah, definitely be walking away from our conversation today with that awareness of like, as I'm filling up, I'm also allowing that intention that I may potentially be carrying to infuse as I fill up. If we're talking about filling up, let's start with the Fontenelle and start talking about how we fill up because this is actually a really interesting journey. Good question. That goes on through the body. Can you describe us? And you don't have to stop at the Fontenelle. You go, oh, 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 I have <laughs> want to address this question because I just, yeah, I want to hear all about it. <laughs> yeah, so the, the Fontenelle is really where it all begins. Uh, the Fontenelle is esoterically known as the Little Fountain or uh, the Door of Brahma and even the mystic Christians knew it as Thura Aesis, which which means the door of Jesus. Um, And it's basically where our cranial bones join at the top. And there's a cross. I mean, there's crosses all over the place, but there's a cross up there where the divine influx really penetrates through the bones. And our bones, by the way, are also crystals, which is Mm. really cool. Um, can I just jump in there for one sec? Because I do want you yeah. to continue. I'm so sorry for jumping in. I don't Go know the it. audience is going to be like, Amrit, let her talk. <laughs> but I have to say, just like watching my son, like because he's two now, and it was literally in the last six months ago that actually the plates in his head started to really come together. Um, and they actually have a soft fontanelle up until that point. And you can feel it. It's actually quite soft. And it coincides with... He didn't really have a sense of me and will, like self-determined will, like oh, I want that. You know, before it was just like I'm in the world and I'm just, hello, <laughs> you know. And then very recently, as that started to all come together, he started being, oh, no, I don't want that, or yes, I do want this, and started noticing that, and I started noticing, and uh, through your book, it started to drop in for me, that actually – like as that started to close, some of the energy started becoming more and more like self-directed rather than just like you said, this antenna, this openness to the collective. Sorry, I just had to jump that in there because it's been supremely it's a profound really for me. really good point. 
But please continue. <laughs> Sorry. No, I love that. So I wonder if that's like where the terrible twos like <laughs> begin. Yeah. I remember that face. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. mummy. Okay. Yeah. Um. But you were saying the fontanelle, the energy, and yeah, please continue. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, we have these magnetite crystals drawing the energy in through that door, that fontanelle fountain point. And from there, it's received by the claustrum, um, which is where we get the name Santa Claus from. Santa means spirit. Claus is. Um, an abbreviation of claustrum. Can you tell us um, a little bit more about that? Because that was the first time I ever came across claustrum I, until I came across your your work here um, in the cell of life. What is going on there? Because it's actually quite interesting. We're going from like electrons and light into like brain matter some way. Can you describe that a little yeah, bit? Yeah. I mean, when I did a deep dive on the claustrum, particularly for the God design. And the thing that really struck me about the claustrum is there was these two guys, Francis Crick and someone, I don't want to forget the second scientist, because I always feel sorry for the person who has to go second, um, but somebody else. And they did all these experiments to prove that um, the claustrum is kind of like an on-off switch for Mm. actual consciousness. Mm. So by this outside prana, this outside light force that's surrounding us, Mm. kind of connecting with this organ, this claustrum inside the brain, it's Mm almost like those two those it's the mechanism between our how we communicate with our reality if you like it's incredible yes (laughs) (laughs) and then um, what happens after that so the claustrum difference the different differentiates the energy into two potencies um, because the claustrum is also a barrier um, between blood and CSF so as that light's coming in it's being drawn into the cerebrospinal fluid or CSF which is I think I said earlier uh, known as Christ oil Uh, Because CSF is the conveyor of light energy. It's literally known. It's part of um, our light body or our lymphatic system because it carries imprints of thought and emotion. Um, And again, there's so many, I recommend... um, Z- oh gosh what's his name Zeruto I'll find it for you so you can link it um his studies on CSF and the I am are just so profound um so once you've got the CSF is basically the manifestation of the body the most etheric substance in the body so the divine light coming in and becoming that that very fine Christ oil substance, that CSF, which mm. can then become denser substances in the body. It splits and the pineal changes it into the honey of the Bible, which is the electric potency, uh, which has to do again with like nitrogen and phosphorus and all those really electric, positive, rich atoms and then the pituitary um split so the opposite side um is the feminine potency and that's the soma that's the prima materia of alchemy um and then together so you know one's traveling in one way as this electric Uh, potency and one's traveling on the other side as a magnetic potency yeah because you call the lunar the pituitary the solar potency yes sorry the pineal the solar potency and the pituitary the lunar potency and at this point there's this sort of two two things that are starting to emerge yes 
So it comes in as one, divides, electric, magnetic, and starts to travel through the body. And that is basically manifests as our nervous system and our lymphatic system. So our solar system, if you like, is our nervous system where all those electric impulses are going through. And our lunar system manifests as our lymph system which is much more in tune with our emotions and the fluids of our bodies and the hormones of our body that allow us to feel and um, have a deeper impression of things not just kind of a 2d perception yeah well the interesting thing about the and i'm conscious that i'm butting in again and the audience is gonna hate me (laughs) (laughs) But the interesting thing about the pituitary gland and the lunar system is then you start talking about the lunar system and the lymphatic drainage and then this real, if we can bring water into the conversation, it becomes really mystical, right? Because it's really interesting. There's a You dedicate a lot of time talking to water in the book as well um, and thought and intention and as this energy then moves through your body, because the like the lymphatic system is all about drainage as well through the body, right? Can you talk a little bit about there before we continue mapping through the body, just the the importance mm. of water? Sorry, I know I'm, I'm so putting you out every, on a tangent. I'll pull you back in. <laughs> every single cell, not only of our bodies, but mm. every single seed in nature, um, you know, from plant life to human and creature life um is born in water so every seed every cell they're all born in water and our water system is our lymphatic system and water is h2o h2o two hydrogens one oxygen per molecule of water and that is an electromagnetic dipole and we already know that electromagnetism is basically light so it's just our water is taking on imprints from our thoughts and emotions at all times so our lymphatic system is always going to be the lens between our inner perceptions and our outer reality So when we're really in alignment, when we really come into a place of like Eden consciousness or Samadhi, we are resonating in a really like beautiful harmonic frequency and the waters of our body can clear old imprints and useless programming and begin to assist with that mitosis because the lymphatic system because that's where all the cells are being born Mm. is really key to the whole process yeah yeah can i bring you back to the process oh sorry yeah go on sorry yes (laughs) sorry i just wanted to quickly say i I I know lots of people have seen it by this point but for anybody who hasn't seen masuru emoto this is the stuff that blew me away right like yeah get on it to get on it watch those experiments they are incredible if you're not convinced about the intelligence of water (laughs) about how water holds memory about how water can affect us on a cellular level then just watch Masuru Emoto's experiments get his book it's incredible it's so inspiring yeah do it yeah and just watching the intention with which things change because he would set the intention of like love and the flower would grow like so beautifully and he would set the intention of fear and the flower would literally grow but drooping and facing the earth and like Mm. just the just the energetic and like vibration of intention and how water responds to that and what grows out of that space and like you said in your book like we're 72 percent water and this is that's exactly why i'm so fascinated about you know what you're describing with the yeah yeah it's incredible yeah so follow the water water yeah we are mostly water you know Mm. and hydrogen is is one one a lot of people get messages from 11 and Mm. talk about following the number 11 um and 
you know, the other atom in water is, again, oxygen, which we've already, you know, talked about it, the correlations with the name Jesus. Um, and when you think about Jesus being I am, and then the fact that we also are, so I am 72% water, it's like, oh, it really is I am, not just in a mystical sense, but in a very literal sense as well. <laughs> yeah. So I'm conscious we've gone from the fontanelle through the colostrum, through the cerebrospinal uh, spinal fluid, spinal fluid. <laughs> and now we're pituitary gland, which was the lunar potency, and the pineal gland, which was the solar potency, which connected to the, uh, yeah. And then so we discussed the lunar potency, where we're discussing the lymphatic drainage system and everything that can be infected, infected affected by the moon and every and our intention in the space at that place. So we're currently at this point in the body where we've got um, the lunar potency, the solar potency, the pituitary gland, the pituitary gland, and the pineal gland. The energy flow from here, Kelly Marie. Yes. So then, uh, the next thing that is talked about in the process is the birth of the seed, and the seed really represents all of the new cells of the body like when we say the seed it's really important to kind of understand that um that comes from a kind of standpoint of making it easier to explain but it's not just you know the one so when the solar and lunar potencies unite in the solar plexus and specifically in the spleen, which is where the biblical manger is, that's where the germinal center is. So that's where all of the new lymph cells are birthed. Um, you know, before they start their 33 years of life where they descend further into down to the base of the spine and then back up to to the cross where we have the medulla oblongata there's a, actually a double cross there it looks like a bit like a british union jack where you where you have the um the vagus nerve which is carrying the solar potency so that's part of the nervous system and you have the fluids coming up through the cerebrospinal fluid, which is part of the lunar system, the lymphatic system. And because there's a crossing of wires, there's a crossing of like those two different potencies, they actually spark and come to life. And that's the place of crucifixion, if you like. Mm. Which was interesting because you mentioned crucifixion and I think for a lot of us it's a story of pain and suffering, but for you it's also a rejuvenation and energization. Can you describe that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, it's quite um I mean, I always struggled growing up with the story of Jesus dying on a cross. I just always thought, really like what kind of father would do that um even if it was for the good of all humanity but you know um and who knows you know about the historical story I don't really specialize in that but on the inside there's just so many parallels um anatomically with mm -hmm. the bible story of the crucifixion and resurrection for example the cerebellum is the tomb um, and again you have that cross of crucifixion in the medulla oblongata where the resurrection of energy is happening um, and you could say that the pineal and the pituitary are Mary and Joseph because they're the two potencies that are birthing the seed um, and then after the crucifixion, Jesus goes into the tomb for the three and a half days. Um, and then as the stone is rolled away, which ironically, the rolling stone is another esoteric symbol for DNA, for the double helix, the golden ratio. Um, that's when we have 
this like moment of rejuvenation um sometimes it can be really pronounced and you know you you can feel all kinds of like physical sensations but other times it's way more subtle but you will notice like the effects of what has happened so that whole bible story along with most other bible stories are all happening inside the body mm. I find that really interesting as well because so we've gone all the way through and the spleen is this really interesting place where all this chemical, alchemical, electromagnetic, light-based potential exists now that we've channeled it all in and then because that's where stem cells and then it's like from there we're travelling back up and you've got, like you said, the crucifixion and the energy. And so now we've almost made it full circle in the body but we come back to the energies into the pituitary and the pineal gland, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So as they come out of the cerebellum, they go through the infundibulum. And as that happens, if the, if enough of the energy is raised and preserved and, you know, it's not laced with, like, the stress hormones like cortisol and um epinephrine and all of those kind of things then it causes that connection between the pineal and the pituitary it causes that that wedding or that welding um that alchemical marriage um the the overcoming of enmity um you know because the Bible always refers to these two energies being at enmity with one another. Um, and it's in its overcoming that that is what really causes the baptism. Because, again, the Bible says we're baptized by fire and we're also baptized by water. And so, again, you can immediately pick up on, well, fire, solar, pineal potency, water lunar, pituitary, lymphatic potency. So we're baptised by both of those potencies coming together and with the oxytocin building in the heart through using that three and a half day period to really devote to the nurturing of our own wellness I mean, this is where the, the original term of tithing comes from. Tithing means 10%. And that three and a half days is the 10% of the months that we, that the original tithe was. So we were giving ourselves in devotion. We were stepping away from all the carnal or worldly distractions. You know, the Bible says, be in the world but not of the world, meaning don't let these illusions take you down. Don't let all of these different like addictions or stresses um, or different things that you think you have to do to attain some kind of status or whatever really overtake you. Bring it back, bring it back to the divine come back into appreciation and wholeness and that's when the parasympathetic nervous system can kick into action and you know we can begin to have this oxytocin this heart swelling uh, mechanism going on and we can you know cause those two glands to to sync up and create the biochemicals of enlightenment It's really incredible following <laughs> just the chemical process that our body goes through and how it just builds on these chemical blocks and then the majesty of just this orchestra that's happening and it's re-happening every, like you said, 29 and a half days. You talk a little bit about these two energies and there's you've mentioned even um, in the God Design there's a little bit around making sure that we harness some of our energies. Can you talk a little, well, share with us 
just at this juncture, I think is important to also have the conversation around like, um, I don't want to use the word abstinence, but sort of consciously there are times where it's useful to retain our sexual alchemical energy and there's times where it's, you know, um, you know, it's more conducive to procreate, but the procreation energy is really, um, potent. Can you tell us a little bit about the potencies and also the benefits of potentially consciously retaining ourselves or abstaining at times, um, to better support our internal workings to further that sense of enlightenment that's possible? Yeah, sure. No problem. Um, so at the base of the spine, we have the sacrum, which is known as the sacred bone. And in that area, we have um, the coccygeal plexus. And it's also where the prostate is, um, which is another one of our endocrine glands, which is massively um, in sync or coincides with the lymphatic system and the fluids of the body and so the prostate actually collects a lot of the major minerals of the body the the really powerful uh, life force rich so phosphorus rich nitrogen rich all of those solar potencies they're all collected in the prostate which in a female is known as the skeins gland and it's exactly the same time for retention for both male and females we both have this gland where those energies are stored and kept as a reserve for procreation but what happens is when i mean you can you can tell how magical these essences are just by the fact that when we do the, use them to procreate we end up with entire new like it's like oh we made people beings <laughs> it's crazy yeah. it's great <laughs> well it's magical <laughs> it's probably the right way like, yeah a really funny comedian who's like have you made people yet? I've made people. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so when there's a surplus of that, i.e. when we don't waste it, um, some of those beautiful molecules and essences can get reabsorbed into the body. And that's what we really need. We need the merging of those animal um seeds um with the higher seed essences the lymph seeds so that's really the solar essences down there that are being collected in those lower glands and as the so as the lunar seed is coming down it's like they're merging and collecting and going back up together mm -hmm. but if if we're wasting um those procreative or those animal seeds at the wrong time then there's not enough richness there's not enough um fertile soil um is one of the terms used for this um available for the birthing of new cells in the body for stem cells for whatever the body again is prioritizing at that time um because they are, you know, the key ingredients to new life, they're also the key ingredients to sustaining our existing life. Mm. And um, regenerating and <laughs> regeneration. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just like a tree blossoms from its original seed, we also, you know, have more blossom when those seeds remain in us. Um so I'm not promoting like full blown, you know, uh, some people do abstain for, for months and end. And um, there are teachings that go hand in hand with the sacred secretion. If you're more interested in this, I would recommend you look at the work of maybe Harold Percival, who talks about um, completing 13 cycles of this with full abstinence all the way through um to really like open what's known as the terminal filament which mm. is 
um, the the finest part of the spinal cord at the very bottom. So the, there's something called the cord equina, which is probably just where the lumbar vertebrae end. And that's where it tapers off into this really, really fine cord. And because the, that central canal goes from being wider into finer, there's more CSF down the bottom there too, surrounding it, uh, because it's just a bigger, bigger cavity, a bigger vessel of space, I guess. Um, so yeah, Percival talks about being able to open the terminal filament and then being able to make a direct link between those solar glands, the prostate glands. At the um, bottom of and, the spine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he, called, he kind of refers to that as being the full activation of the Sushumna um, because usually, like, again, these are very ancient teachings, so we do have to be a little careful about doing our due diligence and marrying things up to, like, what's more like the modern understandings and you know some of this could be a little redundant like I don't know for myself like how true the whole terminal filament opening theory is but I'm not saying that it's not true but I'm also just you know conscious of endorsing it because it's not what you researched Yeah. yeah yeah no I totally appreciate that does it not blow your mind though well, I kind of know it does because you write all about it. But <laughs> I'm gonna ask a question anyway. Does it not blow your mind though that like ancient scripture somehow knows in symbology and in metaphor all this stuff about what's going on in our internal system that science is now able to corroborate? Like, I know you love it, but can you just talk about it for a second? <laughs> I mean, it really does blow my mind. Um... I know there's a kind of school of thought that's very deliberate to keep us in the dark and be, you know, chasing literal uh, arcs, um, you know, and olive trees and all the rest of these, you know, literal Bible things. And Let me go find a literal cup, Holy Grail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 The Holy Grail. Um, but for me personally... I feel like maybe it's just because there are people who could maybe abuse these kind of like ideas and I don't know, maybe it had to kind of be shrouded in mystery to really protect it. Um, Yeah. I mean, I'm open to ideas. I really don't know. I just know that I had a profound experience and I immediately had to get to the bottom of, like, what had happened to me. And everything else has just been kind of like a divine appointment after the next to, you know, really share this um, and, yeah, piece the mystery together. I've always loved a good puzzle, so... Mm. (laughs) Something that you've helped me piece together in the book is the conversation around acidity versus alkalinity. Um, I've always understood this on like a very 3D body-based level. Um, Like, you know, they say even people that are sometimes terminally ill can actually be supported with an alkaline diet. But in the sense of regeneration, and we're talking about the threefold enlightenment, mind, body, spirit, you really bring a whole new lens to alkalinity well for me anyway um, a whole new lens to alkalinity can you describe the importance of alkalinity from that threefold awareness yeah sure i mean our alkalinity versus acidity is measured by our ph levels as you probably know and ph stands for potential hydrogen um so our ph is really when we're alkaline we have more electrons available to for our body to use so when we have more electrons available we have more life force available when we have more life force available we 
are more energetic the body can do its mitosis thing it can do its regenerating thing um the the heart for example is wrapped in um is bathed in pericardial fluid which is alkaline because disease can't live in an alkaline environment um the thing is that we are so exposed to acidity nowadays like most of the processed um packaged foods that we buy because we're in a rush or this that and the other are going to be acidic so um the body is always on the back foot so by raising the ph of the food by raising the hydrogen and the life force which again comes back to like photons eventually because that's you know the most etheric substance um by having more life force more hydrogen higher ph alkalinity in our diets um we're actually assisting our bodies um with just health and rejuvenation along all lines I love that, just that simple awareness that it's potential hydrogen and hydrogens are electrons and electrons are electromagnetism and it's a diet based on more senses of filling up with light. Like it's just, yeah, what? More <laughs> it's, just, light. it's just like, wait, what? And then exactly. even just the, like, the fundamental awareness that it's, oh, sorry, uh, that like acidity or an acidic diet is stripping you of electrons. And an alkaline diet is filling you up with electrons. Like, yeah, I just, in light of the, all the research you put together, it's just like, it caused me to pause more than once. It's, um, it's like, yeah, you can eat some foods that are alive and full of light and energy, or you eat food that's already dead and it really can't give you much at all. So, yeah it's a continual like trade-off get those greens in get those Mm. you know smoothies in lots of like good quality water um you need you need those electrons you need that light coming into your body you need that potential hydrogen to boost you up to bring up your enthusiasm to raise your game to like elevate it's 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 a whole package body mind and soul and spirit you know as you mentioned the word package it's just like i see myself now walking around the supermarket and just going there's no packaging on that i can see the light coming off it <laughs> you know and there's like that's in a box <laughs> and that's just that's dark you know touch of light there's a light sounding like oh it's dark but do you know what i mean like that's that's taking electrons and this is giving electrons this is giving light and it's emanating light and it's sharing light and this is yeah it's it's just a really profoundly simple yet profound like awareness to be carrying thank you so much for sharing that while we're on the topic of food, um, there is this connotation, and I know I may ostracize some people as I bring this up, but I'm going to go there. Um, <laughs> because there's a lot of transmutation of energy. There's a lot that's going on in the, the intestines. Um, and there is, like, alcohol is a bit insidious for what it's doing in your gut. Um, yeah, at the risk of... I don't know, 50% of people tuning in this podcast, turning it off right now. <laughs> Can yeah. you potentially just describe what are the issues with alcohol when it comes to the threefold enlightenment and some of that alchemical process that's going on in our gut and what alcohol really does in there? Because there is that awareness actually that even alcohol is like, they look back at the old spirit of Al and it's K-U-H-O, I think. And it's like this spirit that like actually feeds on flesh, you know, um, touch wood. So in light of that, um, yeah, what's going on with the, the yeah, Yeah, I the mean, the practical side of the threefold enlightenment or raising the sacred secretion is that you know when the moon is in your sun sign um for that time phase you need to be remaining alkaline and 
um, preserving your seed, as we talked about, and alcohol, you know, is part and parcel with that. You you can't drink alcohol during that time period because alcohol will cut the light within. It will diminish the the hydrogen that's available, the electrons or the light that's in avail- available. Um, because I mean, alcohol just like absolutely wreak ha- wreaks havoc on all parts of the body. Um, you know, I'm not teetotal or anything like that, but I personally, you know, when I have an odd drink, like for celebration reasons, like I don't even particularly enjoy it anymore. Um, mm. So sorry to your viewers that hate me for saying that. Um, but I I think because once you've really researched and looked into the detrimental effects of alcohol, um, you know, it really does just feel like, why on earth would I do that to myself, myself? Why would I you know, block the divine light within. Caffeine is a is another one. So caffeine blocks ATP, um, which is the way that energy actually like restores itself in the body. So when we think we're getting a boost of energy from coffee, we're actually like m- just masking how tired we are. Um, so then we have to keep masking it. So, and again, I, I'm not saying I never have a coffee, but I'd rather feel that I'm tired. Tired. And, it's really interesting. And then though, go for a it? sleep. Yeah. Because even like you, you, you find in common conversation, which is like people don't actually say, oh, I'm tired. It's like, oh, I need a coffee, mm. you know? And it's like. You're tired. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, I need a co- I need a coffee, and it's like, you, but you like, what's going on underneath that? Is that <laughs> you're tired, <laughs> you know? And I and I and I'm I'm not speaking because I'm like judging anybody. It's like I'm speaking about myself. <laughs> it's like because as a parent, there's a lot of sleepless nights, especially early on. So yeah, it's like oh, just I, I really need a coffee. And it's like I found myself saying that a couple of times. It's like I really need a. Well, I'm really tired is actually what I'm saying and I need rest and this will help me push through the next little bit but you're actually going to be even more tired on the other side of it maybe it's time to just sit for 20 minutes and just you know do a yoga nidra um, allow yourself to reset or recompose and a question I get asked a lot as well is when people do a kind of sacred secretion or uh, regeneration fast for the first time and you know they do cut alcohol and caffeine and meat and various acidic foods from their diet um they're like oh my gosh I didn't feel better I felt worse and it's like mm. well you're going through withdrawals so you know as your body's detoxing detoxing those chemicals from your system you're gonna get headaches you're gonna feel tired because you're actually experiencing reality. You're not masking it with drugs anymore. Um, to put it very bluntly, sorry. Um, and that's not to sound judgmental because, again, I, I do need a coffee sometimes and, you know, I, I do do that. But um, I think if you are a heavy coffee drinker, for example, it might be good to start preparing yourself for when the moon's moving into your sun sign a couple of days early so that you can get over those withdrawal symptoms first and give the body a better chance to reach its highest potential for flushing everything out and really having that kind of... um, boost of energy coming through so incredible right because you can just sort of see now with the 29.5 day cycles going through your system and it's like yep and like if i'm having withdrawals i'm going through a lymphatic like a lymphatic flush and that is me going through a process and i've just kind of got to honor the process hold tight if i am feeling terrible 
knowing that I'm going through a rejuvenation every moon cycle and that I will feel better. It's just a matter of making it through this period. And, you know, I've been looking at things like, you know, obviously mindfulness in May because, you know, a lot of stuff, what, what I do is about mindfulness and mindset and, you know. Um, yeah. And then there's I love the, it, by the way. There's, there's, <laughs> thank you. There's, um, there's a piece around, like, you know, people doing dry in July, which is like, you know, in July don't drink alcohol. But then you notice people take on a month of dry in dry July and the journey continues. It's like previously they were drinking like two times a week, three times a week, but there's like actual case studies where they've just – you know, and they're just modeling and they go, wow, like people just stop drinking for like three months, six months after. And as I'm conscious that I'm tuning into your work, it's like they've probably gone through because they've afforded themselves a 31 day reset. They've probably afforded themselves a full cycle of like flushing through. Then the body has different cravings because now it's in a very different state altogether, having gone through that period right 100 percent. that's exactly what would have happened to them yeah. absolutely yeah yeah you've mentioned sun in the moon cycle a few times now there are some very simpletons like me <laughs> roaming the earth <laughs> who don't who look up at the stars and just go well <laughs> and don't really understand <laughs> how to actually find when my moon is in my sun sign so how do i find out when my moon is in my sun sign if there's an app i will love you please help me <laughs> there is there's an amazing app that's completely Legend. free and it's so yeah. good i don't know why it's free but i'm not gonna manifest people having to pay for it um <laughs> is it's called deluxe moon and um yeah you basically just you can scroll through the days and each different page on the app will tell you which star sign the moon is in um so you just scroll through until you find when the moon is in your star sign and you need to do it for the duration of both the tropical days and the sidereal days and Dulux moon is there's an overlap yeah if you just do it for the tropical you'll only get two days or maybe up to two and a half days but you need to drop into the sidereal work as well which follows directly after because as the moon's going through the tropical it's in the outer constellation and then as it comes through into sidereal it's more like in the main like body of the constellation but i also do have a calendar that um you can buy on amazon it's called the regeneration calendar and it yeah. just has everybody's days written in it for every month of the year so that you don't have to look look it up yourself Oh, amazing. And so how long is that window roughly? You mentioned two and a half days that it's yes, in one three and a half. Three and a half days is the ideal kind of time Perfect. frame. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And that's a really potent time when things are like yeah. clear, like come clearing out, coming in um for a fresh new cycle. Is that am I looking at it right? You are just being completely like revamped and having some very divine potencies downloaded into you all of your light codes that align with who you are your dna or chromosomes all of that it's all matched directly at that time for each individual and that's why it's the time to do your fasting and your super consciousness practices yeah, I can just see myself setting my intention at that point as well and, you know, as I do and, like, just with so much more greater awareness in terms of what's going on on a greater cosmic scale at that particular point in time um, and just allowing, yeah, just that awareness of flow of energy in my body as well, touch wood, you know, um, and pairing that to, I don't want to say previously I was just slapping a label on every month, um, not really every month, every moon cycle, but it was just for the, you know, there was, there's a romance about it. Um, there's definitely, you know, a connection to the moon and going, yep, this moon cycle, you know, this intention, but now also recognizing that all of that entire cycle was also happening within my body. <laughs> yes. Um, it's super cool. And uh, there's an it's amazing cool. book I it's should good. mention as well. The writer is lovely, Kak Young. Um, he's 
wrote a book called Dancing with the Moon and it goes into more detail about different things that you can do in other moon phases as well. So, mm. yeah. Okay. Check cool. that out. As we're talking about authors, who's G.W. Carey? You seem to reference him quite extensively. <laughs> you love his work. Can you tell us a little bit about him? I do love his work. Um, it's He's quite a controversial author in some ways some of those theories that his name is censored on youtube uh so i won't say it again just in case i don't know if that's true or not um because what he puts forward as you know for the way that the cosmos, so the microcosm, the universe and the celestial bodies and how they marry up with the microcosm, which is our temporal bodies and how they're continually coexisting in tandem and um, influencing one another. That's kind of his speciality. And it's very interesting and very compelling. And it, it resonates with me very deeply. And I feel like there's a reason why, you know, it's suppressed a little. Um, but, yeah, definitely check out his stuff. Maybe do a subtitle. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting author. <laughs> oh, talking about interesting authors, Kelly Marie, I will put a link to your book in the show notes below for everybody to go check out. It is a, how do I describe this? It's a, it's a short read. It's an easy read, but it's, yeah, you leave it like having digest, like you read it really quickly. Like you could probably read it in, I would say half a day, but you'll be digesting it for a, <laughs> for a long time. Nutritionally very dense. <laughs> Is probably a good way to describe it, um, which I actually really appreciate because you've made it um, succinct and concise. And yeah, some people can, you know, and there's no harm in that, but labor the point. But this is really actually very approachable. But the awareness that you leave with it is very profound. So I will put a link to the show, uh, to the book in the show notes um, below and your YouTube channel, which seems to be just coming out with more and more great content consistently. Thank you so much Thank for doing that. Um, yeah, and anything else you'd like to point people to potentially that want to get connected to your work? Um, yeah, the YouTube channel. I do have a course available now on Teachable as well, um, which is called Super Consciousness, Super Consciousness Awakening. Um, and it's really, you know, explains because the, I wanted to make this book more concise than my previous books and try to not go into detail where detail wasn't necessary but it's a very hard topic to sum You've up done amazing. without yeah. context yeah um so i'm glad you said that um but the course goes into a lot more depth about all you know the the bits and pieces and the body parts and the the esoteric names and the modern names and all of those things and then the second part of the course is all of the practical applications so how you can kind of realize the the felt experience of it for yourself because I get a lot of questions about that and I try and gear my YouTube videos towards, you know, guiding and just sharing ideas on how to, you know, access the regeneration in a really tangible sense. Um, but I just wanted to do the course as well. So if anybody was looking through it, just hold my hand and take me through it and have it all in order right there laid out like there it is perfect awesome we'll get a link to that and drop it in the show notes below as well and i've heard you put together a bit of a discount code just for the inspired evolution tribe and audience that want to go yes. to the course 22 percent off um 22 like 22 chapters of revelation 22 letters of the hebrew bible 22 essential elements so 22 percent off for all of your lovely viewers for anyone who's interested in that 
with the code INSPIRED22. Yeah, we are inspired. So (laughs) thank you so much for doing that. So generous of you. Really appreciate that. And we'll put the link again to the course and the discount with the discount code in the show notes below. Thank you so (laughs) much for carrying the awareness that you do and just, yeah, consistently being open to marry what seem to be such disparate fields from the outside looking in, yet always just reconciling them with such grace and ease and effortlessness. And I just find when I have these conversations with you, it all makes a lot of sense. And then I leave the conversation. I'm like, oh, there's a lot of questions in there as well. If we get to come. So I'm sure we'll be having more conversations in the future to come, but thank you. So, and thank you so much for your time here today. Really, really, really appreciate you. You're so welcome. Blessings to everybody. Divine like. <laughs> thank you for having me on. <laughs> inspired evolution tribe and audience thank you so much for making it all the way through to the end of another episode and what an episode it was kelly marika is so dynamic in her awareness of just science spirituality vedic spirituality biblical spirituality man i am in awe of how she carries all these deeply profound awarenesses all at once and manages to just produce a coherent conversation that in stitches together all of this at once. Now, obviously you've loved this conversation because you've made it all the way through. If I can ask humbly, if you are enjoying these conversations on the Inspired Evolution, please do us a massive favor and hit subscribe. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, it helps us out a great deal. It makes the YouTube algorithmic overlord things know that this is the kind of content this positive mindset, positive spirituality kind of content more and more widespreadly available online for people to basically grow, be inspired and evolve in a positive trajectory. So every single subscription, every single thumbs up you give to the video, every single comment you leave makes a massive difference. They all add up. And so if you could please subscribe, it would mean the absolute world to me and the Inspired Evolution team who is creating this content for you with so much love. Now, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. I read and reply to every single comment that gets leave. That's me, Touchwood, that's speaking back to you. Humble old me, just taking the time to read your comment and write back to you. And this conversation was so deep that I'd love to hear from you what you took away, especially when it comes to the moon cycles and what's going on for your body. At the very least, let me know what your star sign is. Um, But really how this conversation based on what you've learned is impacting you. My biggest takeaway from this conversation was really just what's going on in the body and the threefold enlightenment, mind, body, and spirit, and how it's ultimately all based upon getting more light into the system, whether that's alkaline food, the importance of nitrous oxide, and even just fundamentally living in alignment to the lunar cycles. Now, obviously you heard in the episode, Touchwood, I set intentions every lunar cycle and I do that for my coaching clients as well. So I highly recommend you take that on board, but it may not be the biggest takeaway you've got, but it is for me realizing that as I set that intention, things are actually clearing out and coming in, in a really beautiful way. And also just feeling the embodiment of touch with the intentions and the process that's going on with that. So I got a lot from this episode. I trust and hope you did too. And comment below, what were your biggest takeaways from this episode? Hey guys, if you love this conversation with Kelly Marie on the Inspired Evolution, here is another conversation we had with her all about her journey, her story, and fundamentally how it's more about the chemistry of the DMT and how that activates in your brain, um, given the spiritual awareness of God and how actually a lot of the church's teachings and biblical teachings are actually also mirrors for what's happening in our body. And there's this whole yogic awareness of the body and the biblical teachings of the body and how fundamentally Kelly Marie, her journey, she came to this awareness. It wasn't an easy journey for her. If you want to find out more about her and her story and fundamentally the awareness of these connection points between biblical science and Vedic science, biblical philosophy and Vedic philosophy, this is the very best next episode for you to tune into on the Inspired Evolution right here. Enjoy.